affiliation. I'm a recent um, graduate of the NGD program at Reading, and this was broadly about my uh, research of my sort of doctorate. So this is kind of going to be a high-level overview of what I researched into and what I found out. I titled it The Winds of Change because um, it's a vaguely re relevant pun, I suppose, on, on the topic which I looked at to do with wind energy. Um, so the so inspiration behind this article is written up there, I hope correctly in, uh, in sort of ancient Chinese. I don't actually know. It might say something quite rude. Um, but it, it should translate to, when the winds of change blow, some will build walls and others will build windmills. And I mean this uh, in a more sort of broad context than just thinking of building wind turbines, but about how you respond to uh, change in a system and whether or not you are reactive or proactive in doing that. So what I'm going to talk about, I don't have a very long time, is to cover the area of my research, and I looked particularly at the impact of having high levels of wind energy in um, Ireland. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about why the Irish are particular pioneers in this area and what they've sort of really been faced with as challenges associated with wind. I'll kind of therefore introduce my, uh, my sort of research sponsor and why they were interested in this. And I don't have time to go into the sort of depth of method what I found out, but I will talk about some of the solutions and where that's really led for me now um, from, finishing the, from finishing my research. So, I look particularly at Northern Ireland, and the main driver behind that is um, my industrial sponsors, AES, who a lot of you won't have heard of, but they're a, a big global energy company based out of the United States. And within, uh, particularly the UK, they have a large um, presence of conventional generation in Northern Ireland. And they were quite interested in understanding what the impact of having lots of wind generation on the Irish grid, which um, they have a substantial resource of, would mean for how they operate. They've actually targeted 40% of their um, electricity to come from renewable resources, and that's a very substantial target. It's higher than most of the other countries in Europe, and those that are approaching that actually have different ways of dealing with it. So, for example, Denmark's talked about, but Denmark is very much in the centre of um, Europe, and it's connected to a lot of countries, so it can actually export its energy. Ireland is quite isolated, and so the challenges of the wind sometimes blowing and sometimes not particularly great there. So there were two main areas that my thesis looked at, wind ramping and wind curtailment. So by that I mean uh, the impact of having a large amount of wind generation on the system that might suddenly pick up from very low output to having very high output um, or similarly drop off um, as you know, weather fronts move through. I wanted to understand how often that occurs and what you can do about it. And similarly, if you've got a lot of installed wind on the system, you're going to have times where the amount of wind generation you're getting, um, the electricity you're producing for that, exceeds the demand of the system. And that's kind of a hard limit to how much you can use. If you can't use it, you've either got to um, switch it off, or, which is wind curtailment, or find another method of, of dealing with it, which we'll talk about in a bit. And this was against the context of the conventional power plants that AES own. Um, they have a diminishing plant mix in Northern Ireland, which means that the <coughs> power plants that do run are um, often forced to run under constraint, and they're not actually operating under any profit in that kind of situation. So there was really a, an interesting sort of link between these two, that these challenges are going to impact conventional generation, but at the same time, the power plants have potential value in um, helping mitigate and deal with some of these issues. So I talked about those two issues, they're actually quite interesting to compare together because the system operator who's in charge of um, running an electricity system has to deal with both of these and they actually pull in very divergent directions. So talking about um, dealing with wind curtailment, one of the best ways of doing that is to actually reduce how many um, power plants you have on the system to make more room for wind. But simply put, although that reduces the um, wind curtailment issue, you get a challenge that it's also reducing the amount of um, power plants that are able to respond to any change in wind output. So these pull in opposite directions, and it's quite a challenge for the system operator to be able to manage both of them. And um, essentially, without going into the, the sort of details of the method, the three kind of areas that I focused on in my research were the ones you see on the screen. So one was um, plant modification, and in terms of what you can do with the power plants to make them more flexible, to reduce curtailment, and to um, improve their rate of ramping. Um, so one of the things I looked at there was uh, the potential for um, switching fuel 
during uh, times of system stress. So a coal power plant cannot ramp up and down very quickly on, um, on coal. But if you switch to a different fuel like oil, you can actually ramp up and down much quicker and deal with these challenges better. Similarly, things like batteries, AES own a, a company called AES Storage, which around the world um, builds these sort of lithium ion batteries in, you can kind of see a container areas up there. And they have value in um, helping respond to uh, frequency changes on the system very quickly. And the other that I also looked at was interconnection. I mentioned Ireland is quite isolated, but um, improved interconnection would help a lot with it being able to export um, excess wind rather than having to turn it off and be able to rely on other sources of energy from, from different countries during times of uh, stress on the system to do with wind. So that's a kind of broad overview of my research. I thought it would be nice to finish on a slide of where, where am I now? How, what's kind of my route been? So I came from a, an engineering background, but actually civil engineering um, rather than the more sort of, I suppose, systems and electrical engineering that it's moved into. Um, and then I did my doctorate at the TSBE um, with AES for the past four years. And since the time that I've uh, finished, I've spent a few months uh, <coughs> working in um, Parliament at what's called the Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology and um, informing them of some of the issues around uh, energy intermittency and the impacts of having variability on the system. Um, and then after that, I've actually returned to my um, industry sponsor in um, Northern Ireland. So I'm afraid I'm actually not going to be able to hang around for the, the rest of the talk. I've got a, a flight to catch back later this, uh, this evening. But I'm essentially looking at some of the things that appeared in my doctorate and identifying where there are opportunities for AES to, to do something and create some value for themselves and deal with these challenges on the system. So I think that's, uh, that's all I had to say. Just wrapping it back to my um, original quote, I would say that when there's uh, a transformation occurring in whatever sector you're looking at, energy is a very good one um, to think about with that. There are going to be people who are defensive about it and not want to, to react to change and the conventional sort of fossil fuel industry is one that's very much regarded in that light. But there's tremendous opportunity as well as um, sort of adversity, I suppose, and it's a great opportunity to respond to um, the way that the system's changing to create some, some positive value and, and growth. Um, that's all. Uh, as I'm not going to be around at the end, if you want to get in touch, my, my details are in the bottom corner and fire me an email. <laughs>